Howard University law professor Justin Hanford joins us now to break down what today means. Professor Hansford, thanks for joining us. What message does that 22 and a half years the judge sentenced Derek Chauvin to mean? And was it the right call? Yes, well, well thank you for having me. This certainly sends a message of deterrence and it sends the message that this particular act abused the position of authority that is given to law enforcement officers, that there was a particular level of cruelty in this incident that could not be ignored. And because children were present and because Mr. Chauvin committed a cr the crime as part of a group, those were the four factors that the judge said were aggregating factors in the sentencing. Uh, he believed that this justified a departure from the sentencing guidelines. So the idea is to send a message of deterrence to any future officer that is engaged in this type of excessive force. And, and how likely, based on your experience and your knowledge, do you think it is that he will actually serve the entire sentence? I think it's unlikely. I think he is looking at perhaps 15 years with good behavior. And, um, you know, I think that it's important to remember that in these situations, uh, it is true that as someone who has no criminal history, uh, he will be making these applications um, in a, an environment that likely will look to him to be uh, living up to that, that standard of having good behavior. Professor, I've seen people say that today's sentencing brings this tragic case to an end. Yes, Derek Chauvin is headed to prison. But what about the bigger issue that we saw people worldwide rally for after George, George Floyd's murder? Police reform. And where do we go from here as a nation? The greatest mistake that we can make is to, to make the conclusion or to come to the conclusion that punishing one bad apple will bring about the systemic reform that the protesters were calling for. The individual case here, although important, was never the point. The people were in the streets because they saw this case as an example of a, of a pattern that is taking place across the country and has taken place for many years. So it's, it's urgent that we pass police reform in Congress, that states and cities continue to work on police reform efforts locally so that none of this will ever happen again. And we won't have a systemic repeat of this ongoing tragedy that is police violence in America. Indeed. For a moment, I want to talk about George Floyd's family today in court. Uh, we saw his daughter on video giving her victim impact statement. We saw his brother share um, his statement. And we've seen them throughout this entire um, case share their grief with our entire nation. Um, do you think that the way that they've handled this has changed? Or how do you think it's, it's affected people, our nation, as everyone watches what's been going on? Well, I, I've had the privilege of working with Mike Brown's mother as well mm -hmm. from Ferguson. And when these family members take the, the time and energy to relive these situations, the worst moments of their lives, and to just open their heart and to show their pain, they change the world. They change people's perspectives. If this family had not taken the position that they were going to be outspoken and they were going to advocate, then this this case would have turned out much differently. So they changed the world. In addition to the young lady who recorded the incident and the, the millions of advocates, the family members especially took the burden of having to relive the situation over and over again and uh, do so in public in front of all of these people. So I, I, I just admire them so much for their courage and for their strength and for their advocacy.